So, are there any questions? I have not been starting my classes with are there any questions of the, some of the students I think. Okay, there are no questions. What we will do today, today is uh, we are going to look at, I am going to do a couple of demos. We will see how much we are able to get through in this class and uh, depending on what we are able to do this time around, it will spill over to the next class, fine. The two sets of demos that I promised was one using a, a symbolic manipulation package, right, it is called Maxima. Uh, this is a useful package, I use it as and when things get a little messy and I, I need I need to use something. I typically learn, relearn whatever I need, I do it and then since I do not use it for a long time I tend to forget, but there is a reasonable logic to it. So, I will just show you how this, how this package works, uh, I will spend a few minutes showing you how this package works and then uh, we will look at the modified equation, right, for first order linear one dimensional wave equation. Um, maybe even for heat equation and uh, we will see what happens if you add terms to it, how to go about, so how would you use this package and how would you get all those terms, right. The second demo if we have a time will be the actual solution of the wave equation using FTCS, FTFS and so on. There is behavior that we have predicted saying that how that uh, how the code is going to behave, we will see whether it actually behaves that way, right, what, what's, what do we expect, what do we get. So, let me just start with uh, Maxima, I am running a version of it called WX Maxima. This is a public domain software that came out of a, a Maxima that was a commercial package earlier. It uses the WX front end which is the reason why it is called WX Maxima. What I will do is I will start that off and for the sake of these demos of course, I have given it an orange background, normally it would be a beige background. The menus and all that are not important, okay, right. So, I think uh, all of you are able to see this reasonably well, okay. So, what can you do with this? What is the, what is the point here? You can essentially do some kind of manipulation, right. So, you can uh, x star x, 2 star x plus 1, you can manipulate in many ways. So, you can for example, say I am just doing this so that you understand what goes. So, percent basically means the last result, right and all the results as you can make out, they are numbered. I do not know how well it will come out on the, on the video, but they are numbered. But you can say factor percent which is the last result and uh, indeed it gives you x plus 1 whole square, you understand. These are trivial things, I mean this is all school algebra, it is not a big deal. So, you can also define, you can define functions the way you would normally define functions and uh, what we want here is you can differentiate, differentiate f with respect to x once, right. You can differentiate, you can integrate. Uh, there are ways you can, of course, there are other things that I do not, I am not going to talk about right now, which I may talk in a, talk about in a future demo. You can uh, basically do algebraic manipulation and uh, calculus, okay. That is as far as, I will restrict it to that as far as we are concerned. There is lots of other nifty things that you can do that you can find out for yourself, okay. You can do a, a Taylor series expansion for instance. So, you can say Taylor. x star x and you can expand with respect to x about a, how many terms do we want? Three terms and it will give you Taylor series expansion for, right, whatever it is function that you are looking at, which is the kind of thing, now you see where I am going, I am talking modi modified equation, Taylor series is very important for me. So, uh, yeah, you can define functions, so you can just basically say even if you define say uh, g of x. So, if I say, if, if I take a derivative of and I do not, I, I, so this is a indeterminate function in the sense that I have not defined the function, right, g of x and I define g with, res, uh, I differentiate g with respect to x once and it gives me dg dx, fine. 
Okay, so you can you may say what is the big deal, it is just notation but it is the ability to manipulate notation which is what algebra and calculus is all about, right? it is the ability to manipulate symbols. So because this d by dx is a bit cumbersome, right? I mean for, for example if I, I, the reason why I say, so if I say if I differentiate, uh, what shall I differentiate, I will differentiate h of x comma y with respect to x once. Right, so it should be a partial derivative. Of course, I could differentiate that result one more time with respect to y. So I can say diff that result with respect to y once. Right, and the notation clearly gets messy. So there's a package that will make it simple. I need it because I'm going to use it. I, I use this right in my little code that I've written for. There's a package called pdiff partial differentiation which uses a much more compact notation. So effectively something like uh, h of x y if I go back to this derivative it will write the derivative as h and this 1 indicates is differentiation with respect to x. You understand what I am saying? and the 0 indicates it is not differentiated with respect to y, it is like the subscript notation u sub x, u sub y, h sub x, h sub y, it makes life a lot easier. So in the same fashion if I were to use this then it becomes the second derivative becomes h11, it is more compact, the notation is more compact and that is the only reason why I am using that package, right, fine. So but as I said the whole, whole, the whole game is about notation, the whole game, the whole mathematics game is about notation and manipulating these symbols. So yeah, so now uh, we are set, so what, what, what is it, what kind of, what, what do you want to do, you want to look at a modified equation, we can look at it for FTCS, I will show you a fragment of the code that I have written, it is not the cleanest maxima code but I will show you a fragment of the code that I have written for FTCS modified equation, right. Uh, the code can actually be, you will, you will see, you will understand when, what I am talking about, we will go through it you try to get an in, just get try to get a feel for right i'm not saying that oh you have to go back and write maxima programs or something like that that's not what i'm saying just try to get a feel for it so that you understand the demos that's all i want okay right so i go back here and in my directory maxima i have you can see various files that i've created called dot mac files and what i will do is i look at the ftcs dot mac Okay, so you can note you notice I start off I load the I load the p diff, right? I load p diff. Then uh, in line two, I'm setting up. So I'll do these maybe one by one and see what it does, right? So you have uh, I've defined something called tu, which is the Taylor expansion for a function u of x comma t, or wave equation is in space and time u of x comma t. I'm asking for four terms in x and four terms in t right okay so up to the fourth derivative in x and fourth derivative in t basically i want up to the fourth fourth degree i want to retain terms up to fourth degree we have already seen that the third degree second degree third degree fourth degree they have an effect right we have already seen that so let me let me just get back here uh, stick that in here and see what it does so taylor's we will get the taylor expansion right for this and it gives a mess but it is not that bad I mean since you know Taylor's expansion and uh, Taylor series expansion in two dimensions. So I am expanding about the a point a b so I have u of a b time derivative times right t minus b the second time derivative times t minus b squared third time derivative times t minus b cubed and so on fourth time derivative times t minus b to the fourth. Okay. First spatial derivative times x x minus uh, where is that? First spatial derivative or oh, the x minus a is outside. First spatial derivative, second spatial derivative, uh, first spatial derivative, one time derivative, first spatial derivative, two time derivative, three time derivative, fourth time derivative, whole multiplied by x minus a. And it's doing it in a systematic fashion. This is not how we would write it. This is not how it was introduced to you when you did Taylor series in multiple dimensions. But this is a program, right? So it's doing it in a. You can see it's doing 
uh, x0 first and then x1, derivative 1, derivative 2, derivative 3 in a systematic fashion, okay. So as I said, so this, this is, yeah, this is the kind of thing that you could manipulate manually, you can do it manually, right and uh, I have actually done it manually, but it is also convenient to be able to do it in a, right, in an automated fashion and once you have confidence in that automation, you can at least sort of uh, check out exploratory stuff you can do. So I have defined something called TUA which is a convenient, uh, convenient term uh, which uh, basically is the Taylor series expansion in 2D, in 2D with x equals a substituted. You understand, right? So you are expanding only in time. Taylor series expansion only in time. X equal x is substituted as a. So as a consequence, you get something that's very small. Basically, get a Taylor series expansion in one variable. Okay. I don't want to, as I say, I don't want to sort of wear you out with this. But there is a TUB similarly. Maybe I'll just do TUB also. Just, just for fun. TUB and yes x minus a right so the same thing you get expansion you get an expansion of uh, taylor series expansion about the point right about the point uh, ab uh, purely in x in this case okay in the x direction fine now what i propose to do what uh, what is so let, let let me stick with this for some time i have defined a whole bunch of higher order mixed derivatives here i'll tell you why i have defined them I propose to retain only terms up to the fourth derivative. I do not want to track higher derivative terms, okay. The second thing is you remember from the modified equation, what you basically did was you substituted, you took time derivatives of the modified equation and substituted for those temporal derivatives in the sense that uh, you are going to end up, if you keep taking time derivatives of the modified equation, you are going to end up with mixed derivatives, right modified equation has terms that are that are in terms of uh, x and t and if you differentiate it purely with respect to t then you will get mixed derivatives right and i want to just set i want my objective is to use to use the modified equation itself and derivatives of the modified equation to eliminate all higher derivative terms in time whether they are mixed or pure derivatives in time so that i have only spatial derivatives on the right hand side the only temporal derivative I have is dou u dou t. That's what I want. That is the objective of the modified equation. Okay, for this for this setup. So all the other derivatives I want to set them equal to zero. These are uh, various powers that you get for mixed derivatives. So I'm defining them so that at a later date I can say if this term occurs, set it to zero. Okay. That being done, now see all of this is all of this is just what you what what I would call uh, setup time. Then I define four quantities, u, p, q. So just read it the way it's written. U, p, q. I substitute, right? U, p, q. Does that make sense? Do you want me to show you what u, p, q is? U, p, q. I'll run that. So the point p, q is at the point a, b, right? Okay. So u, p, q is basically u, a, b. Is that fine? Fine. We are, we are we are approximating the differential equation at the point AB, right? So UPQ is UAB. Okay. So UP plus one Q. So I have a funny notation here. UP plus one Q. P plus one means X is A plus delta X, right? P minus one means X is A minus delta X. That's the next one. P minus one means X is A minus delta X, right? U P Q plus one is B B plus delta T. Fine. So this looks familiar. This looks like what we have been doing so far. Uh, sigma that is S is the speed of propagation in this case is L. L delta T by delta X. That is sigma. I go to the next page. I do I have a lot of messy stuff. Let me see if I can get you something that uh, that you can see. Yeah, that is the one due, due to the, there you go and this is what we have. So UPQ plus 1, FTCS is UPQ minus sigma times UP plus 1Q minus UP minus 1Q divided by 2, 
fine that is FTCS and after this it is all a matter of uh, substituting Taylor series so that is what I am doing now when I define this FTCS I substitute Taylor series into FTCS so what I will do now is instead of painting you by cutting and pasting I am going to run that batch file. I will just run the batch file and we will get the modified equation right at the end and then I will tell you what it is that we have done. So FTCS I open it it runs through my script and comes to the end okay. This leads it needs a little explanation because I made some substitutions and all of that stuff. In fact you can see that up here I have substituted for the fourth derivative, third derivative and second derivative. Uh, I have called them F4, F3, F2 that is an operational reason it makes it more compact so I have just called them F4, F3, F2 right. So the fourth derivative with respect to X is F4, the third derivative with respect to X is F3 and the second derivative is F2 is that fine everyone okay. So here we have it what is this L do u do X right I hope you understand now that this is L do u do X this term is L do u do X this is do u do T. So what I have on the left hand side is my linear wave equation do u do T plus L do u do X. What I have on the right hand side is the terms that I have carried so far there is a fourth derivative term there is a third derivative term right this is a fourth derivative term there is a third derivative term and there is a second derivative term there is a divided by 12 so you have to appropriately take care of that is that fine okay. So the cheat sheet that I used that day and wrote it out was basically from here right okay so I just basically took it from here and wrote that out. Let us look at but see how did this come how did we get here. So if I type if I go to FTCS which is a, which I had defined right in the beginning right. So this FTCS is basically a substitution from uh, the various terms right in our discretization and from there I have created the whole series I have, I have solved for do u do t I have solved for do u do t because I need do u do t right I have to get do u do t differentiated once I get do squared u do t squared substitute back differentiated one more time get do cubed u do t cubed substituted back right and I systematically go through trying to eliminate and each time I get what do I get each time I get a do u do t which does not have certain terms in it okay. So I call do u do t I call it u sub t or u t okay that is u t. So I solve for u t from the previous equation and this is what I get fine okay. I am going to skip a few steps here because it will get you I will otherwise I will wear you out you will become very tired right this is, this is too much detail there is a lot of detail right. So this is u sub t I just want to show you so if I if I if I go to u t 1 which I generate in between so from u sub t my very first one what does it have it has a third spatial derivative with respect to x first derivative with respect to x fourth derivative with respect to t third derivative with respect to t second derivative with respect to t. When I come back by, by the time I have come to ut1 something funny has happened the second derivative with respect to t is gone that is what I did I eliminated it the 0, 0,2 term is gone you stare at it long enough you will see it right the 0, 0,2 term is gone uh, but I have been gifted in exchange for that a 1, 1 term a cross derivative term. So now I have a headache that is the reason why this is this is a this is a pain you have to be systematic you have to be organized right I managed to get rid of the time derivative the second time derivative but I have got a mixed derivative. So now I have to take the do u do t differentiate it with respect to x and eliminate the mixed derivative you understand so you have to go through this in a in a careful fashion it is like solving a system of equations you have to do the elimination process in a systematic fashion I will show you one more and sometimes it is not quite an improvement right. So uh, you could sit down so you can see that I have a the second derivative I have a third derivative which is mixed I have an uh, I am sorry a fourth derivative which is mixed a fourth derivative which is mixed the other way around right x t cubed and so on then uh, then I have all the all these other terms that I had so I just eliminated what did I eliminate I eliminated the 1 comma 1 derivative right. So you can see that you go through systematically eliminate all of these and every time you differentiate you get a fifth derivative term which you do not want you set it equal to 0 
right every time you differentiate once you will get a bunch of fifth derivative terms but you know the nature of those terms there are only so many terms so you set them all systematically to 0 right that is what I have done and finally got the modified equation is that clear right if you were to do it manually that is what you would do you have to be very organized right in fact uh, I apologize for my last quiz but it was, it was a dreary quiz because you have to you have a lot of keystrokes involved right so if you look at if you look at the time that you have 3000 seconds and the number of keystrokes that you had to do you will see the keystrokes per second was quite large I mean that fraction that is that is it was a fraction but it was quite large that is the key so it gives you an appreciation for it is an anticipation of demos like this it gives you an appreciation for why we use this we use these kinds of things okay it is it is a it is a it is a headache you cannot we, we cannot sit down systematically do right a whole set of these calculations manually right? it takes a lot of effort it takes a lot of care fine okay so uh, yeah so now that that is basically that is basically what we have in fact uh, I, was, I was just thinking whether I should narrate uh, uh, an experience of my own as a student I was given an assignment to teach me the same lesson of course you had it sort of in the quiz. Uh, to do the determinant of a 7 by 7 matrix by hand. I was supposed to do it the long way, it was an assignment, 1 out of 15 assignments, supposed to do it the long way and show all calculations, 5040 calculations. I learnt a lesson, I cannot do 5040 calculations in a row without making mistakes. I did it once, I got a number, I was not sure, I did it a second time, I got a different number. So then we do the standard engineering test, do it a third time it has to match one of these, it did not, <laughs> not only did it not match one of these, the numbers were diverging, right. So at that point I stopped saying that, so my assignment basically said which apparently what the teacher was looking for, the conclusion I had was I cannot do 5040 calculations in a row without making a mistake, right. So there is, there is, but you have to, but when we do symbolic manipulation, you can be a little more, a little more careful because there are patterns these kinds of things we can do actually there are patterns but a package like this will get rid of the drudgery right but I would always cross check right I would always cross check is that fine. So we have FTCS you want you if you if you want to see that if you want to see that uh, right I can, I can show you a few more of these so the, the penultimate so I, you go to UT8 you see my god before it simplifies it gets really bad right the here now I have made substitutions differentiated sub made substitutions you try ut9 right so there are there are there are a lot of these but this is just near that and finally uh, let me see if i have an mw so that's a modified wave equation i've already simplified it a little right and then i decided that i wanted to gather terms collect them and put them in a little more easier fashion which is why i created the way uh, f3 f2 f3 f4 so that it came out in a compact fashion fine okay so that is the sequence basically you sit down you systematically eliminate okay and as I said I am sure there are better ways to write this program than the way I have written it. Are there any questions right so this is this is a pretty straightforward demo I mean it is not there is nothing uh, right nothing spectacular about it. I can try if you want me to try another uh, if you want me to try something else we can look at FTFS. okay and FTFS gives you because uh, I have shown you these terms so this is the second derivative term here right the second derivative term second derivative term is multiplied by uh, sigma minus 1 right a sigma minus 1 in our notation I used L here because when I was doing this derivation I was talking I was using lambda do u do t plus lambda do u do x sigma minus 1. So, so you can see that the terms but these 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 in this case I am using the modified equation to eliminate the higher derivative higher order temp temporal derivatives okay. So you could also do it using the wave equation itself so that is something that you can try out fine so that is the third derivative term. So you know that any scheme that does this is going to be dispersive it is going to be unstable it is going to be unstable because there is a negative sign in front of the second derivative term FTFS is unstable it is going to be dispersive because it has a third derivative term right the existence of the third derivative tells you it is dispersive 
and the existence of the fourth derivative with a negative sign could stabilize it but we do not know our, our analysis showed that it is unstable we have to actually run it to see what, what happens is that fine everyone shall we look at something else. What would you like to look at FTBS I think is something that we have done. So there is FTBS and again just to bother you one, one last but one time I am going to do this one more time. So you have the wave equation there dou u dou t plus L dou u dou x FTBS as we suspected has a fourth derivative term it has a third derivative term it is dispersive and yes it has a second derivative term there should be a negative sign outside somewhere here fine that is a sigma minus 1 minus 12 where is there a negative sign hmm? unless I have made a mistake yeah anyway that is something that you can that is something that you can check up off hand I cannot seem to make it out right we can look at that we can look at that file. So ftbs dot mac upq minus up minus 1q right and I am substituting I am solving for uh, this term there I am actually solving for dou u dou t right from the FTBS term is that fine okay so yeah I am indeed I am doing FTBS it is a it is a long painful painful equation in mean painful uh, program but you finally get to get here let me look at mw1 just to make sure that I do not have a problem yeah this is one of the reasons why I do the factoring because you get these uh, you get these terms that are uh, so this is positive yeah it is negative. A oh yeah no, no yeah, 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 it's fine okay <laughs> this is uh, yeah this is sigma minus one it's not one minus sigma sigma minus one sigma is less than one as we a negative sign uh, uh, negative sign in there somewhere okay fine for a minute there I was a bit concerned so if you look at if you look at the earlier one uh, see so you shouldn't just let me get away with this right that is so if you look at the earlier one if you look at uh, the one we had. Uh, oops that is going to take some let me let me do FTFS just to convince you that I am not cheating you okay the sigma minus 1 is what does it. So I go through do FTFS and here it is a sigma plus 1 that is the thing that makes a difference that sign makes a difference right sigma is less than 1 so for stability so that is where that condition comes from okay. So yeah so you can get the modified equation what else can you do with this. Well I have one file that I have created just for this reason and uh, if you want we can play around with that file or we can uh, so I have got something where I have added artificial dissipation I have something where I have added artificial dissipation I am doing the same and you can see that what I have done is I have added a sigma squared u p plus 1 q I will just select that uh, a sigma squared u p plus 1 q minus 2 u p q plus u p minus 1 q divided by 2 fine I am just doing FTCS I just add that extra term and then you can ask the question what happens to that you can actually ask the question what happens to my what happens to FTCS if I add that extra artificial dissipation term and that is the neat thing here now we can do this what if kind of uh, right you can you can play around 
and what happened? F2 disappeared, the second derivative disappeared. So I figured out that term that I added was exactly the term that I needed to add sigma squared by 2 second derivative, discretization of second derivative. But that is not the term that you get with the modified equation. There you get some sigma minus 1, right? We just saw that minus 12, minus half sigma minus 1 by 2. What is the deal? Am I making sense? See if, if you if you add a second, so you have to realize this. If you say that I am going to add a second derivative term, you look at the modified equation, you look at the modified equation and you say aha there is a second derivative term. So let us look at the modified equation again. I will go back and I am going to just rerun the modified equation because this just generates a lot of uh, okay. Uh, maybe I have is it FTBS modified equation is that is that what it is called? Yeah, there we have it. Okay. So there is a 12, remember there is divided by 24, so it is a half. So you can say wait a minute, why do not you why do not you add a times sigma minus 1 divided by 2 rho squared u do x squared. That is what you should add to eliminate the term. Why do not I add that? Why am I adding something else? Does that make sense? Does the question make sense to you? Do you understand what I am saying? I want to eliminate this term. Hmm. I want to eliminate this term. In order to eliminate that term, I should just add that term to the modified equation. In order to eliminate this term, how come I am adding some other term? The key is, the key is in my discretization I never add dou squared u dou x squared, I do not add the F2 term. I add a discretization of dou squared u dou x squared. Now I have a new discretization, I find the modified equation for that. Am I making sense? So the, am I making sense? I find the modified equation for the discretization of dou squared u dou, I do not add dou squared u dou x squared, I add a discrete representation of dou squared u dou x squared. I do not add dou squared u dou x squared, it is important. I add the discrete representation of dou squared u dou x squared. I get a new improved modified equation which will still have the second derivative term. Okay. And if I go through, I systematically I say okay, I will add that, add that, add that, add that, and I keep on adding extra terms, all of those terms will combine into sigma squared by 2 dou squared u by dou x squared. That turns out to be the modified equation term that you get if you were to use your original equation. That is what I was trying to say, I want you to, you, you need to think about that, you need to think about this. It is not that difficult but it is because there are so many different equations that are there, you have to be able to knock it out, I mean you have to be able to figure out how you knock out that term, okay, right. So my suggestion is if you try this out, you know how to knock out the second derivative term, see if you can figure out how to knock out the third derivative term, right. I have knocked out the second derivative term, see if you can figure out how to knock out the third derivative. Is that fine? Okay. Are there any questions? So, yeah, this is this is basically this is basically uh, what we have as far as uh, as far as this is concerned. If there are no questions, maybe then I'll go on to the uh, the solution of the equations and see what is the effect that these modified equations have on the solution of the equations. Okay. So, to that end. Unless you I mean unless you want to try adding other artificial dissipation terms to see what happens. You want to modify this thing and see if, see if it makes a change. If you want to add any other term, you can add any other term. Maybe we'll do that. Why don't we do that before I go on? Let I, let me let me just edit. Uh, I'll, I'll change this. Okay, so I'll copy that uh, FTCS underscore artificial dissipation 
to FTCS and the same petal. Oops, it looks like I do not have a enter in the last term. What do you want to do? You want to make the sigma minus 1 and see what happens, right? That is what we had. We'll make it sigma minus 1 and see what happens. Maybe I should have done that first, but anyway, it is okay. Next time I do this, insert open bracket s minus 1, 1 minus s because I have a plus sign in the front, okay? Fine, everyone. That is what it is. Speed into 1 minus s divided by 2. I will not save it, I will just write it in case you want to make a change. Let me reload that batch file and see what happens. So, I called it FTCS. Yeah, it got a lot messier. Modified equation got a lot messier, right? There is the 12 F2 term that is still there, but this is what happened. And that does not look like it is going to cancel. It does not look like anything is going to cancel there. Am I making sense? So, as you can imagine, as you as you go through each time you made. So, you can now potentially turn around and say no, no, I will add this term. You go back and say I will add this term to it, fine. That is what I meant. So, in order to get rid of it, you have to find out the actual term that you need to add in a discrete form. You want to find the actual term that you need to add in a discrete form that is involving p plus 1, p, p minus 1. What are the terms that I need to add? Linear combination of p plus 1, p, p minus 1, so that the modified equation does not have a second derivative. That is really the question we are asking, okay. And it turns to it turns out that it comes from sigma squared by 2, 2 squared u, 2x squared for the wave equation. For every equation, you will have to figure out what it is. Is that fine? Okay. Yeah, yeah. there was one other thing that I promised you, promised to do for you. I mean, unless you guys want to try something else out, I will, uh, I will go ahead. I do not know. What was the uh, uh, difference between FTBS, I mean central space, central difference and forward difference, do you remember that? That was just a sigma by 2, sigma by 2 into a delta x actually, right, right. So, let us, let us, let us, let us see. So, we have a sigma star dx by 2, that is what it was, okay. If you go back and look at it. That is what it was. I will write that file. See if it makes what it does. So, I run the batch file. I will run it again. And this is what you get. Hang on, let me make sure that. Am I doing this to FTCS? Yeah, I am doing it to FTCS. Fine. Okay. Okay. So this is what I get. Does this look familiar? Right. You look at this. Let me see if this works. Percent minus FTBS modified wave. Not sure if I've done that right. Sometimes, let me just look at FTBS modified wave. FTBS modified wave. FTBS modified wave should basically give me that, and that are essentially the same. Okay. 
here I seem to have some extra terms that I will have to possibly simplify. Hmm? Question? Fine. Okay. So yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll 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 get back to it. I'll do this FTBS minus modified wave. See what it uh, what it's doing. Okay. So if there are no questions, what I'll do is I'll just start. Off, oh yeah, I'm I'm sorry. There's one last thing that I wanted to do, which was uh, something that I've not done in class. It was a modified equation for the heat equation. Modified equation for the heat equation. And there's a reason why I want to do do this. I'm doing this simply because when we did the modified equation for the wave equation, right? I connected up the stability analysis, the linear stability analysis that we did for the wave equation for FTBS, FTFS, FTCS. I connected it up with the modified equation and the various terms appearing in the modified equation. Okay, and I basically showed that if the second derivative term was negative, the coefficient of the second derivative term was negative. That is, the second derivative term was right. What you're adding was negative that you are uh, you had uns instability it, that it corresponded right that those correspondence so you, i may i don't want to leave you with the feeling that oh i just have to do the modified equation which is a mess but i just have to do the modified equation and i'll get the same stability condition that i get with the linear analysis linear stability analysis okay so to do that i know an equation where it doesn't actually work out exactly that is the heat equation so we'll do the modified equation for the heat equation so that you'll actually see that you'll actually see that that does not work. So I run the modified equation so this is just sort of things streaming past. Heat equation is very simple right it does not have the odd derivative terms it is nice dissipative system. Heat equation is very simple dou u dou t that is the first term dou u dou t minus L dou squared u dou x squared that is heat equation equals there is no third derivative there is no dispersion you are not going to get dispersion it is not there and you get a fourth derivative right you get a fourth derivative am i making sense so you can ask the question the fourth derivative and for stability the fourth derivative has to be negative there is a negative sign in front so you can ask the question when is this positive when is this when is this thing in the brackets positive and it does not give you the same stability condition that linear analysis gave us the von Neumann stability analysis that we did by substituting exponentials cosines and sines gave us a one half this seems to give us a one sixth am I making sense okay so you have to have an awareness so if it is less than one sixth it will work but you can actually go up to one half the guarantee still works if it is less than one sixth yes it does work it is just that you can actually go to a larger value. Okay, so that in, that in itself should give you a clue about these stability conditions, what they mean, what is the analysis, what is the what is the result that we get, what do we expect from it? Okay, what do we expect from the behavior? Fine. Okay, so I think uh, I leave it at that. Of course, this is the fourth derivative, so you expect that as it gets small, it's going to get really bad. Okay, and uh, we'll remember this one sixth maybe when we run when we run our codes. Okay, let me now go to let me now go to the I will just start off the other demo we will most probably not be able to finish it in this class we will go on to the next class right I will start off the second demo. Uh, this is for the wave equation right I have, I have over the years these demos have evolved and now finally I have added a small sort of user interface to it not a big deal. So what I will do is I will run the uh, I will run the demo and we will see if we will see how far we can take it in this class. So let me quickly get that bright thing out of there okay. Uh, yeah so this is what this is what I can do. So some of this may not come out because the font is quite small I was not able to figure out how to make the font larger right now so before this demo so it does not matter maybe I will be able to fix it but anyway we will see right now it is ready to run FTCS okay the number of grid points is 10 that is what is set here the number of time steps that I take at every time I click this go button is one time step 
the CFL that I am running for remember what I told you so people you typically ask what is the CFL condition for which not condition what is the CFL for which you are running that sigma is 1 and this other stuff I will tell you what it is later. So there are no scales because actually I do not care I, I just want to see behavior right there are no scales I am not bothered with scales. So that is the initial condition is a step right. So with that initial condition of course if you have 10 grid points or what are that uh, you can only represent a ramp you cannot actually get a step right by increasing the number of grid points you can make it better. But this is FTCS so what do we what, what was the expectation that we had FTCS is going to diverge is going to diverge second derivative was negative there was a third derivative it is also going to be dispersive okay it is also going to be dispersive. So the question is is it going to diverge yes it is already gone above 1 so it is going to diverge and uh, it is wavy which is all I can say I mean something that started off as a ramp now has waves in it so it looks like it is dispersive so maybe yeah that is true maybe that uh, that is a fact. Let us take more grid points and see what happens so instead of uh, 10 grid points I will take 101 grid points let me reset that I take one time step because I have more grid points my ramp is my ramp is closer to the step I have a step function it is much closer to the step. So if I take one step at a time you know of the first two steps it looks like it works but afterwards it is just not that is it it is just not going to work and you can see indeed it is I mean it is like it is like you have a rope and you are right that you are you are you are shaking that rope I mean it is, it is really it is really oscillating I have, as I have not bothered rescaling nothing of that sort I do not care if it is off the scale when I start with 0 1 I already have problems right I already have problem so indeed indeed it oscillates so there is not much that we can there is not much that we can do can we take a smaller you think maybe if we take a smaller time step it may work I mean the mathematics says it is unstable but do you trust it if I take a smaller time step would it work right so let us try point 1 I will reset if I do not reset it will sort of continue with that which is not what my intention is right now that is point 1 well point 1 basically means I am taking one tenth of a time step so maybe I will take 10 time steps at a time right so well yeah for a minute there for a minute there it looked very hopeful but it does not look like there is one thing that has happened though it is not diverging as fast so the dispersion is becoming much more clear right because the coefficient in front of the second derivative term is small it is going to diverge it will eventually diverge fine it will eventually diverge but because the coefficient is small it is not diverging that quickly fine. So but uh, it looks like the dispersion is very clear and you can actually make out that you can actually make out that what started off what should have been a step function or what could have just diverged right the values could have diverged is in fact oscillating is that fine. I will choose as I said in the next time that we do it I will choose a more uh, what should I put it the next class when I do continue with this demo I will choose a more uh, I mean I have a tuned set of I can tune this I will choose and just for fun there seems to be some sinusoidal something riding on top of uh, right so you have to wonder what is that so it does have to do with it does have to do with the fact that the scheme is dispersive that that is happening okay it is not an illusion it is there that is not an illusion you may think oh it is an illusion it is not an illusion it is actually there is that fine okay just so that we do not end this day with a pure disappointment <laughs> okay I will run FTBS right we will run FTBS and from what I told you FTBS with sigma equals 1 was supposed to have worked they do FTFS oh I did FTFS I will do FTFS in the next class FTBS with sigma equals 1 I want to leave FTFS see whether you guys can predict what is going to happen. So before we work last word for the day we will run, F, run FTBS with sigma equals 1 first let me take one time step at a time reset it oh it is a ramp but that is the way it should behave 10 time steps right that step no distortion in that ramp but it is a ramp 
right. So you say wait a minute how do you know that it is let me run 50 steps. So if I run 50 steps it should come halfway right I will reset it run 50 steps yeah it comes halfway goes right up to the end just to the end okay. So I am picking up the propagation speed I am actually picking it up exactly is that fine okay. So when we come back in the next class I will run the rest of the we will see we will try to explore what happens with uh, numerical solution to wave equation and there are lots of lots of nooks and crannies that we have to look at lot of okay fine right thank you.